Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI. And this is a video to show what we look for in a foot. It'll just go over some anatomy and then mention a few uh, pathologies we look for. So on this view, this is a coronal view of the foot. We can see the toes up here in front. We see these long things here. These are the metatarsal bones. We see these one, two, three bones here in the midfoot. These are the first, second, and third cuneiform bones. We see another big bone here called the cuboid bone. It articulates with the calcaneus, which is that heel bone. We don't see all the heel bone on this view, though. We also have this navicular bone, the kind of cupped appearance, and it articulates with the talus here. So talus, navicular, cuneiforms, cuboid, calcaneus, metatarsals, and then we get the toes here. And on this view, we see fat as bright as fatty marrow. Anything fatty is bright, so the subcutaneous fat is bright. The fatty marrow is bright, and the dark stuff here is the muscles. So we can see the foot muscles. And on this view, we look for arthritis. We look for inflammatory processes. Sometimes you have things like gout that will erode the bone and have uh, soft tissue areas that represent synovial inflammation. Or sometimes people just have generalized arthritis, like osteoarthritis, have joint space narrowing, spurring erosions, or may have rheumatoid arthritis and have other uh, findings. We just look for arthritis, look for any uh, bony pathology like tumors. We also look for these little bones that are beneath the first metatarsal head. They're called the sesamoid bones. And here's one of them here. There's two of them. This is one here. If we go down, here's another one. This is called the medial sesamoid. This is called the lateral sesamoid. And we see that the medial sesamoid has a problem. It has a band right in between it. So it looks like, the, like there's two. This is a very common congenital finding called a bipartite sesamoid bone. Very common. It looks like a fracture, and sometimes fractures could mimic this appearance, but this one is just a developmental finding where there's two of these. It's very, very common. And on this view, we also look between these metatarsal heads. So these are the metatarsal bones, and we look between the heads. You can have inflammatory processes called Morton's neuromas. It's inflammation around the nerve, and that inflammation can cause a area of gray signal here, a little soft tissue, it looks like a soft tissue mass, but it's perineural inflammation. A little uh, nerve that goes through there can become inflamed and the soft tissues around it swell. And that's a fairly common finding we look for. And if we go to another view, we're going to look at these bones better. So this view, the bones all look good. There's no arthritis. We just see that congenital bipartite sesamoid bone here. I don't see anything else, but this is not that sensitive. We're going to put up a view where we suppress all the fat to make it dark, and if there's anything bright, that means it's, there's something wrong. And here it is. This is a fat-suppressed view where the marrow is now dark on all the normal bones. The subcutaneous fat is dark. The only thing left bright is fluid or inflammation. And in this case, there is edema or fluid within this bone, and this is a metatarsal stress fracture. So it's invisible on the other view, but this one we can see it quite well. And this is one of the more common things we see is a metatarsal stress fracture. These patients will do too much, run too much, or sometimes they're in military training, will have to do too much uh, exercise that when they're not used to it. Or sometimes people will not jog for a long time and go for a long jog or go on a hike and come back and they'll get these metatarsal stress fractures. This is a sagittal view. Looking from the side where we can see a toe here. This is the second metatarsal bone. This is the head by the toe. And we see these lines, or these arrows rather, pointing at this line. This is a stress fracture line. And then the fogginess around it is the marrow edema. So a metatarsal stress fracture. Now in this view, we can also see another finding we look for. This is the plantar fascia. Come along the bottom of the foot. It looks normal, but patients can have inflammation of the plantar fascia. They can have what we call plantar fasciitis. They can have little benign tumors called plantar fibromas. And we see the plantar fascia coming over here. And then we can see this dark band that blends with the fascia. It goes underneath the metatarsal head and attaches to the base of the toe. This is called the plantar plate. So we look at the plantar plate to see if it's intact. This plantar plate is intact. Here we go to the, this is the third toe, I'm sorry, the fourth toe rather, third toe, second toe. And here's the big toe. Here we can see that bipartite um, sesamoid bone. This is a short axis view. And now we can see the metatarsal heads. We're going through the metatarsal heads here. 
These are those two sesamoid bones, the medial sesamoid, lateral sesamoid. Here we can see the second, third, fourth metatarsal heads, fifth metatarsal bone here. Here we can see these bands along the bottom. These are those plantar plates. We want to make sure that those are nice and clean and intact. We can also see the tendons, the flexor tendons, these dark bands. Are the flexor tendons, when they contract, it'll make the toes pull downwards. And these little ones along the top are very small, hard to see. These are the extensor tendons of the toes. And all the tendons here look good. And the gray here is, this is all muscle. You have dorsal muscles, plantar muscles of the foot. You can see these thickenings that are dark, these are the tendons. We also look for ganglion cysts, as they're not uncommon. We see little fluid pockets around sometimes that are ganglion cysts. And sometimes patients can have tumors that look like cysts or just uh, tumors that look like solid masses. And um, when we do see a tumor or something that may be a tumor, then we'd like to give contrast to see if it enhances. And this is that metatarsal stress fracture in this patient. You can see that the muscles around it, the gray, there's brightness in the gray, so the muscles are also injured as well. That's very common. These muscles look okay. So just a quick little video to show you what we look for in MRI of the foot, some of the uh, pathologies. And then this patient happens to have a congenital bipartite sesamoid bone and a metatarsal stress fracture. Thank you very much.